hello friends in the present video we will see the assumptions of the coulomb's wedge theory so just like similar to the rankine's theory by using coulomb's wedge theory we can find out the earth pressures in a retained mass so as i have said to you assumptions are very very important so let us first see the assumptions considered by the coulomb okay now just like in rankine's coulomb's also assumed that our soil is homogeneous already we have seen what is meant by homogeneous and also isotropic and also they are assumed that semi infinite semi infinite and also he is considered that dry soil and your soil is in elastic condition remember in a rankine it is under plastic condition elastic and also it is applicable for the cohesionless soils rankine is also applicable for the cohesionless soils homogeneous isotropic semi infinite only the difference is that here in coulomb switch theory he is considered it is in elastic but rankine he is considered it in plastic state and he is considered that back wall he is considered that back wall he is considered that back wall is inclined and rough back wall is inclined and rough what about rankin rankin is considered that back wall is vertical and smooth but here he is considered that inclined and the rough and he is considered that failure plane failure wedge that means the failured soil mass acts as a rigid body acts as a rigid body acts as a rigid body and stress acting over it is uniform and stress acting over it is uniform so in exam they may ask you how the failure which is considered in the coulomb it is considered as a rigid body and coming to the next assumption he is considered that failure is two dimensional otherwise he is considered that failure surface is planar failure surface is planar in rankine's is also it is planar and passes through the heel of the wall and passes through the heel of the wall in rankine also he is considered that failure surface is planar but here also failure surface is planar and that is passing through the heel of the wall and point of application and line of action of the resultant thrust between the wall and soil is known and that point is mostly not important but these are the important points first one is that he is considered that soil mass is under elastic condition and also applicable for the cohesionless and most importantly the back wall is inclined and it is considered as a rough and also failure which he is considered as a rigid body and stress over acting it is the uniform condition okay these assumptions are very very important they will ask you for the one more question sir what about the or how can we evaluate the active one passive earth pressures based on the coulomb's theory the equations are very very large even i can guarantee even if you study it now you will forget in the exam so in exam i can guarantee that 200% they will ask you a question on the assumptions but they will not ask you to 
uh, find the pressure based on the Coulomb's theory. Why? Because the constant, the active earth pressure, passive earth pressure constant itself is a very big equation. Not easy to remember. That's why 200% we can say that the questions will not come from the numerical questions will not come from the Coulomb's. But they may ask you the theory question based on the assumptions we have discussed here. And also we have to note it down one more point that is we have to see type of wall and also we have to see frictional value. I will say friction angle or else roughness is measured that is represented by delta. So it's better I will mention it as a roughness angle. Suppose if your wall is smooth wall, then your roughness angle you will be considered as a 5 divided by 3. If it is retaining wall, that means ordinary retaining wall, then the roughness angle will be 2 phi divided by 3. If there are rough walls, they will mention in the question, don't worry whether it is a rough wall, smooth wall or retaining wall. If they ask you to find out the roughness, then it is 5 by 3 for smooth, 2 5 by 3 for retaining. And if it is rough wall, the value will be 3 5 divided by 4. And don't go or don't study beyond the points that we have discussed. We have discussed already a lot. Okay. Don't even study one point more than what we have discussed now. They will not ask you in the exam. Why? Because the problems are very, very lengthy and they will take you half an hour to solve the problem. Do you think in the exam they will give you a problem that will take half an hour? Obviously, no. That's why don't waste your time by doing problems on the Coulomb's theory. Only by heart the assumptions and then by heart this roughness values. These are more than enough for the gate examination point of view. Okay. Thank you. In the next video, we will start a new chapter. Thank you.